10, 9. You want answers! I want the truth! Get ready for two guys who can handle the truth. I want the truth! You can't handle the truth! But we can! Dave Palumbo! Chris Aceto! RxMuscle.com presents Heavy Muscle Radio! Watch out! Welcome to another episode of Heavy Muscle Radio. I'm Dave Palumbo and I'm joined as always by the technician Chris Aceto on this August 17th, 2020 evening. And Chris, uh, we're inching closer and closer to uh, the New York Pro, I guess you could say. It's not in New York now, it's in Tampa, as we uh, mentioned on a previous show. Also, the North American Championships are going to be that weekend. So we have, we have like a, I would call it, what, super like a Super Saturday weekend coming yeah, up? Kind of like Super Tuesday. I do want yeah. to say, Dave, that our pregame show, which we you do not record... Yeah. Is better than the actual oh, TV show. Absolutely. Why? Because it's 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 we call ourselves the truth in bodybuilding, and we do tell the truth, but not really. We don't tell the whole truth. <laughs> Nothing but the truth. No, you know what the truth is? The truth is we don't really we talk with the truth. We just don't mention some things, you know, that 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 are too truthful. I feel like a politician. You like can't handle like, the truth. Yeah, yeah. I feel like a politician, like if. Yeah. Getting ready to give a big speech, and they thought before they go out and give the speech, talks about, oh yeah, he's an asshole too. Oh yeah, that guy's an asshole too. Oh, he's a crook. That guy's an idiot. And then he gives the speech, and everyone, yeah. you know, and it's like, yeah. it's a nice, flowery, motivating speech. And so we have our pregame show where Dave fills me in on all the drama that's happened in the world of bodybuilding from East Coast to West Coast, all over Europe and beyond. I don't even know anything anymore. I, I, no, I don't. You, Dave, you Dave, you sound like Bob Gruska now. I don't know anything. I don't know. You, you sound <laughs> I, like Sergeant Schultz. I do know one thing. Uh, Gary Udit is uh, got the North somehow managed to pull off this North American. Of course he, did. Chris, he did it, and I, I have to, I, <laughs> I have to pat Gary in the back. I'm sure he got turned down at every hotel to have this thing because of the whole COVID, and you know, because the North American, there's like a thousand people who compete in the show. There's no way. With all these regulations they got about you know people congregating, there's no way no he spread it over two weeks. He couldn't he couldn't do it the right way. So he said, you know what, we'll hold it outside. So they they get a they have a big tent. It's going to be like a circus probably, which is but bodybuilding is a circus anyway. Yeah, I can only I only hope. Well, I wonder if they could put air conditioning. I guess nowadays they could do air conditioning inside the well, tent. Well, I guess I've if they it. have a you know, I've they, seen that happen before. Yeah, they have AC and tents at weddings and yeah. in yeah, Saudi and sure. Kuwait. <laughs> yeah, they should we, get like the funny thing is they, they should get Bader in there to show them how to do it, you know. These are the two shows. The North American the, the North Americans, oddly enough, we I think we kid off air that it was gonna go on no matter what. We didn't know how. But you know, you that show has grown into like the most massive colossal show. Right. And we were speculating on how or where they're going to have in it because I think the, the hotel had changed or something. But the idea, unless it pours like crazy, to have it outside under a tent is, you know. Well, even if it rains, it doesn't matter. In the tent. I just, if it's very hot. Now, we're already getting to September. So in Pittsburgh, September might not be that warm. Yeah, it's really humid there. Yeah. But um, yeah, humidity doesn't do well for tans. I was just going to say, we might have tan issues, tan yeah. snafus at the show. That's the only thing I could think of. The tan, tans could run and stuff like that. So it might be a little, but he has it, you know, they have it spaced out. So like over four days. And then of course they kind of text you, which is great before your class, I guess to give you time to get back there. And, and so they don't want people congregating. So it's, it's like when I, when I tell people, you know, when I go to the doctor's office now, I love it because they, they don't want too many people in the waiting room. So you, you literally, when you come in for your appointment, they take you almost immediately. It's like, mm -hmm. there's no waiting anymore. And that's, I think, what the show is going to be like. They don't even want you at the show until you're ready to go on stage. So you can kind of hang out in your hotel room, I guess. You know, relax, eat. They give you a text. Oh, I got to go down for the show. Okay, down there and within 20 minutes, you're on stage and uh, and you're done. And people, they're doing the finals of prejudging together. People so, who last minute jimmy up their arms can really time it well. They'll get the text. It's okay, <laughs> put the stuff in the triceps now. So you get judged, and then they actually give you the you, you know you do your night routine, and then you're done. It's like all in one shot. Your whole all this this you know the the whole weekend is basically has been reduced for each competitor down to what about an hour. Yeah. So great. 
Yeah. Yeah. Pretty soon they should just, um, you know, you should just be able to just uh, pay for your pro card. You don't have to even go. <laughs> they'll well, judge you. I, they'll judge you virtually. I you, think if you if you get two seconds, like we said, it's like first class and cattle class. If you get two second place, like at a national level show, like say yeah. the nationals, you might you should be able to maybe like buy. Yeah, buy you can buy a vowel on the Price is Right of one of those shows. <laughs> And in cattle class, sometimes he'll say, you know, anyone, we have one more ticket left and one more seat in first class and want to upgrade last minute, pay 150 bucks. So if you get second in the nationals three times, you can pay like Look, three grand and move up. We kid around, but you know what? These are such freaking weird times right now. And you know what? I, I You got to hand it to Gary. I'm sure he's having a nervous, 10 nervous breakdowns trying to make this thing happen. Probably every, every week they're changing the rules. He's got to move hotels. He's got to move. I mean, that's that's a monstrosity of a show. You really don't want to have to be moving around. You know, they yeah. had such a comfortable situation with the Sheridan Station Square there. Everything used to be comfortable. It was right, right? there. I remember you get right you get off the elevator, Chris, and you're like literally a hundred feet from going into the uh, the ballroom there, which is where they had the show. And I remember when I used to go back, to, you know, going back to the early 2000s when I was going to that show, I, and I, even before that I went to it, but I'm saying when I would go there, it was so comfortable. It was like the, it was like just like a relaxing environment. Mm -hmm. It was like you you walked out of the uh, the dining area there and you're in like the ballroom and you're watching the show. And it's, uh, it's, it's everyone is in a good mood there. They're more friendly because it's all like, you know, Masters. Well, at least that was when they had the Masters Nationals. North American has open end masters, but mm -hmm. people just seem to get along at that show. I don't know. It's a, it's a, it's a more laid back uh, Amazon, except when I got choked out by Jim Manning that one time there. Four. I don't know. Oh, right. Yeah. You remember um, when I was with Colette, they thought that she was tanning people in the room and um, because, you know, someone had an exclusive or something like that on the tanning. There's no tanning in the hotel, but she mm -hmm. wasn't. She had like a note on her door that she was tanning people in another hotel. Which is the truth, but we were staying in the, in, the, in the host hotel, so I guess they got bad information. Someone tried to like rat us out and get us in trouble, something like that. So Gary must have told Jim, and Jim's like yelling at me, and I'm like, Jim, first of all, it wasn't even me, but I'm like, Jim, he's like, I, I warned you guys, you know, I like, Jim, we didn't, we, she wasn't dancing anywhere. <laughs> so I, I was, so he he pointed at me and said, I got to talk to you, you know, and his, embarrassingly in front of everyone. So I pointed back at, at him and I said, I got to talk to you because I heard that he was looking for us. Uh, and he didn't like that. So he came running, to, <laughs> came running towards me. And I was big at this time still. I was really big. And, was it resolved amicably? Yeah, no, he was, he, he apologized to me actually because he, you know, he got bad information. Not that he should have chugged me anyway, but I, he, he was all, he, he actually had a colonoscopy coming up, and he was the, the, the following day or something like that, two or two days later, and he was all like nervous. He said, <laughs> "But it was all fun." That I had a lot of, uh, you know, Jim Madden and I, you know, we had the same birthday. That's we had this commonality that we were always, you know, we text each other on each other's birthday, and and I, I think that sometimes we we have like um, we we clash because we we think alike, you know, and that's dangerous mm -hmm. sometimes, you know. <laughs> There could be only one uh, person who's, you know, in charge, and Jim's in charge. So I have a lot of ideas, you know, that sometimes those ideas. I'm just going to say, you know what? They don't, they don't go over so well sometimes. Well, you know what? I, I mean, do, when though. you said you guys got the same birthday, then that's the same, yeah. obviously, zodiac sign, and you, mm -hmm. you're both creative. Yeah. You know. well, creative and leaders. What did Jim create? He made the whole thing. Well, yeah. Turned this whole thing into what it is today. Well, look what you've created. I don't know what I've created. Apparently. Well, you got species. You've got yeah, yeah, I guess so. You did RX Muscle. You got YouTube. You right. got snakes. Yeah, you, you yeah. got kids later in life. You're killing it. Yeah. Well, you do the same thing. You got your own little, your own little uh, real estate empire that might be uh, going up in, in dust <laughs> if, if, they don't, if they don't end this. this gonna... if they don't end this COVID thing. You might be. Uh, <laughs> I was just gonna you know, say, you know, I was gonna finish the sentence for you. You were gonna, I was gonna say it's gonna go up in flames. I was gonna say, when are you auctioning off gonna... properties? I want to maybe see if I can pick up something at, yeah. a, at, a, at a reduced price. Oh my gosh, I'll have to get Alan Dershowitz to help me out with the, the you know, the, the, legal, the legal legal parts. Yeah, what's the uh, what's going on with the Miami uh, condos? Are those have you been shut able to down? rent those? No, they're they're shut, down. shut down. They've been shut down since oh. March. Poor Chris. Think of that. It's terrible. Yeah. 
Ask anyone who has a Miami Beach condo and ask them how much the HOA fee is a month. Well, how much is it? The lowest is a thousand. Wow. So you're paying that Time plus two. if you have a mortgage and, and it sucks. Yeah. Yeah. So do they, um, does anyone have any uh, idea of when they may open up again? This is the slow season for you anyway, probably, but no, it's still busy. It's always busy. It is um, even during the summer. Yeah. 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 Um, nobody knows. There's no, nobody has any forward vision mm -hmm. on what's happening in Miami beach uh, because Miami beach is right. It's an international city. Right. So it's like, you know, no one's traveling internationally. Yeah. Yeah, no one's. But at the same time, that that's why COVID is COVID there because you you get a mix of people who did travel, you know, in out out in. Right. You know, I will say one thing because a lot of people were, you know, we had speculated, and I know a lot of people were saying, you know, the Olympias, there's no not going to be any, you know, European guys in the Olympia. What what's going to happen? How are they going to not going to be able to get here? I, I'm not going to say who told me this. I don't know if they want me to tell you, but there's there's a loophole. I heard that today too. Oh, you did. Funny okay. Yeah. The loophole that I heard from my source, probably the same source as yours. He told me that what they're doing these bodybuilders is they're they're flying to like Dubai, and if you hang out in Dubai for two weeks, quarantine yourself, then you can fly anywhere you want. Oh no, I heard there was a loophole that they were. Um, oh, then I know who you're talking about. The initials yeah. DJ. No. Uh, which would be Dennis James. Yeah. No, uh, okay. no I I heard that um, there was a exemption for like. You know, I'm co I'm coming to the United States, competing in a big competition. I got a big legal case. I'm coming to the U.S. You know, this these weird. I exemptions. don't. I yeah, I think that these guys are just like you know what they're not even trying to go through that route because so many guys have been shut down. Like uh, Samson Dowda was shut down at the uh, at the uh, London airport. There, these guys are just going to go to like Dubai or Kuwait, hang out there. <laughs> You know, train for two weeks at Oxygen Gym, and then they'll just fly to the United States because you can fly from to Kuwait here. It's only the European uh, flights that are being blocked or making being quarantined. I don't know why, but it, it's <laughs> that's kind of ridiculous. Because they blocked us. Is that what it was? Oh, okay. Yeah, right. they, they blocked us, and Trump said, "Oh, tip for that." Okay, so I think these guys will figure out a way to get here. There seems to be some loopholes, although they're canceling. They, it seems that they're canceling. They canceled that. Um, I feel I felt bad when I heard about yeah. it. They canceled the um, Japanese pro, Jap uh, Japan pro, which is a Hide Yamagishi show. Sure, they canceled something else. Just got canceled too. Uh, Japan and I don't know Hong Kong maybe. Or, no, let's see, Japan and so, hold on. I'm looking at this Max Muscle report. They got oh Boston pro is canceled. Boston pro. Yeah. It says postponed, but yeah, but it's really canceled because it's postponed until next year. So yeah. Postponed is only if you, it means if you I'm have gonna, it the same year. I'm going to send. Out, I'm going uh, to postpone paying on my bills. I yeah, think. yeah. I don't blame you. What's going on with? Um, since you, I mean, I don't even know if you know, but what's going on with Sean Roden? I don't know. Like I said, I think that um, right. If there was a strong case, it would have already gone to court. Well, I, what I don't understand court. is if I'm if I look if I'm Sean Roden's lawyer. And, and Sean wrote it. And I know that I have an Olympia that I can possibly be jumping into at the end of the year. And, you know, I know that maybe the case is not strong against against me. I want to push to go to trial, wouldn't you? You can't push the government to go to trial. No, but they, no, but the timetable, you, the timetable hold on. The timetable yeah. is exclusively set by me, the government. Not you, the lawyer. Right, but I thought you. you I mean, you file we, all your papers you want. No, but you have a right to a speedy trial. That's no. that's one of the constitutional rights we have. No, you, you could, Dave. It's how do you define speedy? Well, I don't. It's been going on for two years. That's not speedy in my book. Well, you know what? That, that's that's. Uh, why don't you do an investigative report and call I up the, the the Utah uh, prosecutor? I got to send Romano, put sick Romano. Yeah. That's a Romano job. Yeah, he would love it. Yes. Yeah. My name is John Romano. My wife is a lawyer. Right. Well, maybe his I wife used to be a writer right. for MD. <laughs> it makes me exclusively like uh, qualified, yeah. qualified yeah. to be able to, you know, investigate this case on behalf. I'm of sure Jordan Roden sees uh, Heath going back into the show. I'm sure he wants to go back into the Olympia, right, and go against him again. You want my, my opinion on Sean Roden? Yeah. 
Sean Roden goes up against Brandon Curry. He's got his hands full. Mm-hmm. Sean Roden goes up against Phil Heath. He wins. Now, why do you say that? Because, um, because human nature, uh, in 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 an athlete's mind, the the best there is the guy who's won it seven straight, and in that show that Brandon won. No disrespect to Brandon, but it is disrespectful at the same time that uh, the previous year's two winners and previous six straight winner was not there. Yeah. So I don't think human nature being what it is that Sean can rise to the level of uh, where he needs to rise to to beat Brandon. But to beat Phil, it's easy for him to rise to that level. Well, then that's good then that, that Phil's yeah, doing it. Of course. Assuming that, that Roden can do it. So now, you know, they're not going to let – I don't see them letting Roden do the show if his case is not settled. And, and I mean, we're, at, we're right now we're, – we're almost in September, right? We're at the end of August. That's September, October, November. So that's three months. I mean, the odds of him – I don't know. Maybe he's going to trial before that. I don't know. Yeah, originally, I, I heard October, right? Now, I don't, I don't know if that's – well, I heard June originally, actually. I don't and know. That I don't date know. that date passed. No one see. I got I don't know. I don't know. I wouldn't. I guess we should contact Roden and ask him. I mean, why would I, he be talking about it? Um, this maybe his lawyer told him to shut up. I'm, yeah, I'm maybe. speculating. It's possible. You know? Yeah, it's possible. It's possible. I just I'd love to see him in the show. Wouldn't you? What, what, what I, of course I would. What we do know though is if uh, if there was a strong case, they would have hauled that guy into court. Eons ago, mm-hmm. if it was remotely strong, remotely so, you, so you're saying to me that it's you don't think it's his side delaying, you think it's this, it's the state delaying, of course. And the, and the problem with the state is once they've brought the charges, they never, ever, ever say, Oh, we sorry, we're gonna drop. I mean, there's no reason for them to drop them, right? Makes them look like fools, true, true. So, so I, do, so, I, do I do I am I guessing that it's a weak case? I'm guessing that it's ridiculously weak. Mm-hmm, right. I've yeah, been right, saying that since, right. since I looked into the girl who made the accusation. Um, was a convicted bank fraudster with her entire family. I think that played into my decision that she's a fraud. We'll have to find out and wait. We'll hope. I, I hope I it may, goes. To, I, I, I hope it goes. To, my words, but I highly, 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 highly. Highly, highly doubt it. Yeah, well, I hope it goes to trial soon. I saw uh, Ed Connors uh, posted a picture on um, his Facebook of him and Matarazzo. I guess that was Matarazzo's wedding, it looks like. Looks like it. Right? Great picture, man. Yeah. I miss Ed my Connor. Ed, Connor, Ed Connors is kind of like um, not Rain Man. Who am I thinking of? The, 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 Box of chocolates. Life is like a box of chocolates. Oh, Forrest Gump. He's Forrest Gump in that. Remember, Forrest Gump. So many different worldly events transpired through Forrest Gump in the movie. So many bodybuilding events and so many yeah. bodybuilding stories and and success stories and not so successful stories. You see, he wrote. Too. He wrote. Mike Monterazzo, born. November 8th, 1965, died the year Gold's Gym was founded. Oh, excuse me, the year Gold's Gym was founded when he was born. He died uh, 8 16. Oh, so that was, oh, that's why he posted it. Okay, so it was yesterday was the um, the anniversary. At the age of 48, gone but not forgotten, one of the greatest physiques and personalities during the golden age of bodybuilding. You know what's so funny, Dave? One time, um, Laura and I got picked up somewhere in New York in a in a limo that Mike was guest posing at mm-hmm. with Laura. And we had like this three hour drive to go somewhere. And I asked Mike, um, how many, I'll never forget this. How many guest poses have you done or appearances this year? He said, this is my 44th consecutive weekend. <laughs> That's crazy, right? 44. And Mike wasn't charging, you know, 1,000, 2,000. You know, yeah. he was charging a lot of money. Yeah. 
It's crazy, right? And yeah, yeah. You know what his 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 non concern was too. He could care less that he had crappy workouts because he enjoyed traveling, meeting people, sure, getting to see different places. Yeah, he was a popular guest poser. Very, very popular. Very sad, you know. Sad when we see the guys like that, you know, die. I, I didn't realize he was forty-eight. I, I, I actually thought he was younger than that. But uh, I, I've talked to his wife on occasion. She had contacted me uh, after what some some story that came out, and mm -hmm. she's uh, she's living up, uh, I think, by you. Really, in Vermont or, or or somewhere in Maine? Oh, yeah. I actually, I think she's in Maine. I think we talked about this before. We did talk about this, but um, yeah, it's. Uh, Sad, you know, he was a good guy. I used to talk to him a lot on the phone. Um, we had, we had similar mutual friends. Uh, this was probably back in the not late 90s, and uh, Mike was so loud, yeah, yeah. Huh? <laughs> yeah. It's funny because we didn't really we never hung out in person, but we got someone that connected us on the and we used to talk on the phone and just go over, you know, we'd talk bodybuilding and bodybuilding drugs and supplements and diet and all kinds of stuff mm -hmm. like that. and but then we talk about all the people we knew and common and he was, he was just like, he could talk to anyone that just goes to yeah. show you, you know, we, 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 this was before, you know, the social media age, I'm, you know, where people would just text each other all the time. So we, we had to get on the actual physical telephone with each other, you know? Yeah, no, he got along with it. He, people got along competitors liked him. Yeah. Let like them, uh, Wheeler liked him, even though he would talk crap about Wheeler. You, you know, know, you know why they liked him though, because they respected, because they were scared of him, because he was he was probably the toughest guy at Golds there. Even though those guys were like, you know, Flex was a, could fight and stuff like that, and Christian could fight and those guys, but Matarazzo was just like you could tell he was brutal. You know that the, no one wanted to mess with him. You know, well, he came from boxing, right? But he was also, I think, he was a guy who could handle himself just yeah. with his hands. You know, in any capacity, street or in the ring. You know. There's not many guys like that. There's not. Any, there's, they don't have to make tough guys like that. How, how ridiculous was his back width? How about his his calves and arms? Yeah. When he won the USA. Yeah, insane. The freakiest of all. Yeah. Couldn't believe it. Yeah, his calves looked like they had tumors in them. <laughs> they didn't. Right? They, they didn't look real. Yeah, I mean, it no, was. It they, was like, well, they looked like implants. I mean, hundred <laughs> percent, but they weren't. It did. No, it did. It, that's the weird thing. They, they, they came weren't. up and they. they Took like a right angle. They were ridiculous. He had freaky body parts. Yeah. Yeah, Ed, Ed, Ed was really close to him, huh? Yeah, well, Ed is, I think that was one of his main discoveries. Ed's claim to, uh, to fame on that one was that he, did, remember he said he went, and had to, he went and talked to his parents or something like that and told him he had to move to California. Yeah, and gonna... yeah that's right. He flew out there. He flew, yeah, he, flew, he flew to Mike's house to talk to Mike's dad and mom, you know. That's hey, pretty crazy, that's right? That tells you how much Ed believed in him, right? Yeah. I own Gold's Gym. I started it the year your son was born, and he's going to be, you know, <laughs> champion. <laughs> you, you can't write this stuff. Yeah. I and mean, he, right yeah. now you send an email, you do FaceTime, right? right? Yeah. Ed would have to buy the airline tickets. I think Ed liked to travel. Yeah, Ed liked to travel, but... He he knew Mike was a talent, and and when Mike moved out there, people didn't know who he was, right? And he said, and he was, I already was running around the gym telling people, I'm going to win the USA. I would, he, Dave, I, I've told the story on the show before, and I know we have new listeners and people who quit. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> uh, but Mike, I had my office in Gold's gym, and Mike came to see me the day that he got there, and I, right. I, oh, I ne I'd never met him yet. Did he know who you were? Yeah, because I, he was training with Paul for years, and oh, I was helping okay. Paul the Mayo. Right, right. And that's another story because Paul said, "You think I'm impressive? You should see my training partner." I'm like, "What are you talking about? What are you talking about? <laughs> right? Be like we are saying, oh, yeah. you think I look good? We have yeah. good beach, you know, good flow. You should see who I train with." Yeah. So Matarazzo came to my office, and he posed for me, and he was so sloppy fat. <laughs> and he had like 22 weeks, and I thought he'll. He, there's not enough weeks to burn oh, out. Oh, really? Wow. The, the the fat on his lower back, love handles, was like floppy. Were you like Bob? You're like mm -hmm, with the cigarette hanging out of your mouth. Yeah, I just. 
He, did, he told me, I'm winning. I came out here. Ed brought me out here. I'm winning the show. It was just like a, a declaration. <laughs> Maybe he came to my office in case I was helping people to like try to scare me or something. Yeah. Oh, he wanted like the, the word to get out. But you, but he wasn't in shape, so what was he posing to you for? I don't know. The, the, he, you know when people think they're in shape? Yeah. <laughs> and and, and uh, I was stunned that year that he even got into shape. And what was he? Did you watch him in the gym? Was he doing like like massive amounts of cardio and stuff like that? He was starving at the end, and and uh, he was starving at the end, and he had this rivalry going with Wheeler that they would shit talk and scream at each other across the gym every single day. Oh, really? Yeah, and that's why he probably could starve because at that at that point, you know, he just had the mentality of like, I'm just not eating if I need to not eat. Look at him there. Look at that's what he wants. Look at the legs. Look at the legs that year too. Yeah, I, I don't know what happened to his legs. Yeah, his, legs his legs were never yeah, good. I'll, I'll tell you exactly what happened to the legs. Um, you want to know what happened to the legs? What? 44 guest poses in 44 weeks. You can't oh, you turn. Did. Yeah. That yeah. was probably two years after he won that USA. And I think he was resolved to, like, you know, I can't. It's hard to do both. I'm going to travel this much you could see in his face he suffered for that show oh he 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 was on brutal low calories towards the end look at those calves how funny is that <laughs> this is when i when i saw evan sit the piney that's what it remind he reminded yeah me. yeah evan has that type of physique right there and we got you know when i helped him when he won nationals um his face had that same look they looked like they could have been brothers almost yeah Totally sucked down. And the funny thing is, they have the very similar looks to the physique because Evan yeah. had, you know, the great arms and calves, oh, not as good as Mike's, but uh, and they had the leg problems, both of them. They had the good front quads, and but they just didn't have like the the girthy adductors, you know, that like well, they, both, they both have good pecs, but they don't look like they have good pecs because they're so wide. Right, right, yes, right, because of the width, and they both had great backs too, obviously too. But. Um, I, is Evan supposedly coming back this year? Is he competing? I thought he was getting ready for the New York Pro. Yeah, because I mean, he had torn his quad about two years ago, I think, right? Yeah, yeah, right before. I think it was before. That's soon brutal, as before. That's yeah. a brutal. Uh, that's a brutal recovery. But he, you know, Evan's such a. Uh, I'm sure he's so meticulous about everything he does. He probably won't even be able to notice it. You know? Yeah, you know, it's funny. I spoke to Evan right when COVID started, or maybe like three weeks in. And I sent him a text message and I said, how are you doing? He said, you know, with this COVID and being home, he said, I love it. I'm getting so much done. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, he definitely loves it because he doesn't want to travel anyway. You know? <laughs> yeah, you don't want to leave the house. Now he has a good reason. Now he has a good reason. 52 weeks out of the year. I'm, you know, at some point I'm like, you know what? I kind of like this. It's like I don't have to like worry about going anywhere. <laughs> there's, no, there's no pressure. You don't, to go to the mall. you don't even go to the mall with the kids, right? Can't go to mall. We, yeah, we don't go anywhere, you know, because it's too, you know, it's too risky. But you know what the thing is? After a while, you don't even care anymore. You get used to it. That's what they want us to. The, you know, the government's happy. Look at that shot, Evan. I love that shot. Yeah. You know, it's Instagram. Yeah, it looks great there. Probably, you know, the best with some of the best real arms in the business. Oh, you know, yeah. Not beat arms. Yeah, triceps, biceps. Shoulders, 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 bias, forearms. Rack. Yeah, brachialis. Unbelievable that whole that whole uh, connection there. Those are the arms you you dream of having. Like I, you and I had like like skinny arms. <laughs> like we didn't have. Yeah. Evan was like born with genetic arms. You know, you could just see him. He probably lifted did one set of dumbbell curls, and his arms probably grew like four inches. You know, from it. First time he picked up some dumbbells. He was a fat kid, and it, he's like, "I'm going to try to do some bicep curls." Within like six months, he had like you know 18 inch arms. You know, <laughs> that's that's genetics, though. There, right there. I mean, could thank his dad for that. He has a good shot of his legs. Hold on, look at this shot. Hold on, what is this from? Oh, this was after the 2009 New York Pro. Hold on, look at this. Let's see. Get it up there, Dave. It's a good shot, right? Yeah, very good. 
He, I, I always said I, I didn't think he ever really realized his true potential. He was, you know, he didn't, he didn't compete that much. Um, I just think that, you know, it wasn't. I don't think it was. It was a priority for him necessarily. I think he loves oh. bodybuilding, like you know, all of us bodybuilders do. But I think, yeah, you know, he's more into doing like his own little thing too. He doesn't. It wasn't like the, like I have to do this more than anything else. And he, and he's not selfish about it. You know, he was. He has a family. You know, he has a wife and a kid and. I think that uh, you know he found balance in, somehow in his life, which a lot of guys can't <laughs> can't do. Ever, ever. he's right. lucky. Also, he got he has a really good relationship with I know uh, Animal. Yeah, but they, they he's been sponsored by them. Even when he left, ever. I think for a year or two, he, they took him back after that. Yeah, he went he went to the uh, with someone else, and then they came back. He was with Aaron and PJ when they had that weird company for a while. Remember? Yeah, they had the blow up doll. I think that was like. <laughs> They did. They had like a blow up doll, like commercial or something. Yeah, PJ. Oh, yeah. And that's what Evan did like, right? And Evan, that was a, you know, a line in the sand. Yeah. yeah. Funny, right? Yeah. <laughs> Chris, you got to give your memory is better than mine is, which is terrible. So, well, I'm older. Look at that shot. That's the flex bar, I think. Yeah, you might be right. He's got a pretty good record too. Evan, you know, when he competes, usually uh, usually wins shows, you know, unless it's like yeah, the Arnold. There was, there was a, the year he was third at the Arnold. He arguably, I don't know, he could have won that. I think Branch won it. I think Wolf was second. Is that the year Branch had the torn quad that he came back? I don't know. It just, I don't think it mattered what he what he had torn or not torn. No, you remember Branch had had yeah, the yeah, torn yeah. quad that year, and somehow in six months was on stage and won yeah. the Arnold. Yeah, and he looked good. Don't get me wrong; he deserved it. But he wasn't like he wasn't the Branch Warren that we had seen in the past, is what mm -hmm. I'm saying. Yeah, from the from the waist up, Evan is is pretty flawless, you know, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, he's very good. So we have to we have to, <laughs> we have to we have to we have to like go back and it's like we're like two old men like talking about the old days, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's what we've been we've been reduced to during COVID times here. Well, Ed, Ed Connors is relevant, and and yeah. certainly Evan Santapani is relevant. Yeah, well, they're all they are. You know, it's funny. I uh, was talking to Nick Trigilli. Oh, your friend Nick, my good buddy Nick. And um, hold on a second. They took down his YouTube channel. I don't know if you heard that. Who's they? YouTube. Why? I don't know. They told him you can't have it anymore. There must be a reason why. They said you violated something, but they didn't tell him what, what he violated. It, it seems as though from the he sent me a screenshot of it. Seems as though like someone ratted him out, like someone had it in for him or something like that, and someone like must have reported him that he was doing violating YouTube rules or something. Who knows? I'm sure I'm sure everyone violates YouTube rules if they really want to get down to the nitty gritty. Who reads who reads the list of rules that they have? You know what I mean? I'm sure like if you say the word boo too many times in the video. So you when violate. did they take it when did they take it down? Just recently, he has no more YouTube channel, and they and they told him if he tries to start an account under another name. I was just gonna say, why not start an account? I was yeah. gonna say, why not start an account under another name? No, they warned him in that. Although Dr. Tony Huge has been doing that for for years, you know, they they keep taking away his accounts every time they find out it's him. But <laughs> it it's so weird though, right? I mean, like what what could he? I mean, what could he have possibly done that would would warrant them taking that? He's National not like a, secrets. I don't know. I, I mean, what's a, what, what, yeah. I mean, give wrong carb loading advice. I mean, what, 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 what could he have said? No, I don't I know. Hope, I, Nick, Nick I, you know what? Nick, Nick didn't think that Kamal would repeat because he doesn't have a good social media presence. So maybe <laughs> YouTube, I had a little bone to pick with Nick on that. So maybe YouTube uh, came to the senses and said, you know what? I don't know. It's just weird. I, whenever I hear like weird stories like that, I'm always like, "This is this." Well, is so what did he do? He called you up and said, "Hey, Dave." No, I'm, I'm someone else told me. They said, "Hey, did you hear that?" I think Nick lost his channel, and like, so I texted him. You know, we talk now, with friends. I'm like, oh, "What's going on, Nick?" Uh, he goes, and he sent me the screenshot from YouTube because I lost my channel. I don't know. I just went on to log on one day, and it wasn't there. They sent me this this notification popped up. I'll 
I wonder what he could possibly said. I mean, how many times I got to wonder that out loud? Trying to get a lawyer, I guess. I don't know. But, you know, they you you can't get in touch with those people. It's like trying to get in touch with Amazon.com. Oh, yeah. They make it purposely so that you can't get in touch with them. You have to jump through hoops to try to. That's the new thing. The new thing with these big, like, Facebook and Instagram. Try to get in touch with Instagram. You call the 800 you number and you hit zero. Like, you got to hit zero, Dave, for like three days. Zero, 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 zero. I don't even zero. think there is an 800 number to call Instagram. I had an Instagram problem, like, maybe, like, about a year ago, and I, I had to figure it out myself. What what problem can you have with Instagram that people I don't couldn't like? Log into one of my, I, I usually I, I have two lot two accounts. I have my Palumbo's Pythons. Well, I have more than that, but I have Palumbo's Pythons and Boas, my my snake channel, and I have the huge two eighty five channel. And then of course we have RX Muscle, but that's a separate thing. So I have the two of them. You could toggle back and forth from them on the, on your same phone, you know, so you can upload. To, I couldn't get onto the the one the snake one for some reason. Hmm. I don't know why. So I'm like, who the hell do you contact here? I couldn't figure out who to contact. There's no way to connect to these people. They don't want you to. They don't want to talk to anyone. They don't want to have a customer service hotline. Oh, my God. You'd have to have like a force of 50,000 people answering the phones. They're making plenty of money, right? I mean, what Whenever I complain for? to Airbnb now, I, I get some lady or some guy working in their house because of COVID. Because I always say, I would like to speak with a manager. Yeah. Yeah. That's my father's favorite line. <laughs> it's not as effective anymore, but when I was a kid, my father used to say that. He used to scare Bring me the like, manager. Yeah, yeah. He was a tough guy too, so I won't be scared. Yeah. Manager would show up. My father would threaten him. Yeah. <laughs> he would. He would. Are you really? <laughs> oh, yeah. Threaten everyone. Everyone all the time. Getting fights left, right, and center. Did he, did he always come out of top, or did he did he ever like walk away with his, his wounds? I only, I only saw him lose one fight. Really? Yeah, against two guys. Yeah. A physical fight? Yeah, it was very little. Yeah. Oh, so he, you actually saw him physically fight? Oh yeah, too. I said drop people like scared me to death. Wow. Ooh, watch the guy go down. Yeah. <laughs> were you were you mortified? You know, by the whole thing, or were you like <laughs> like dad? That's my dad. Yeah. Kicking butt. Yeah, mortified. Yeah, I figured. <laughs> because anything could happen at any time. Oh, it's scary. Yeah. What if your dad would have gotten you know killed? What oh, he's been in jail, but I mean, lawyers would have. Uh, this was for you know lawyers. This day and age, he would have been in jail faster than who's in jail right now on bodybuilding. Oh yeah, yeah. He would have definitely been. He would have been arrested. Yeah. <laughs> they don't mess around today anymore with that. Unbelievable. So we better keep the show clean so nobody reports you and you wake up one morning yeah. and try to put on Palumbo's pythons and you, you log in. But when you get to RX Muscle, it's missing. You'd have to hire Alan Dershowitz to get it back. Yeah, I, I, but I just, I really, I wonder, I wonder what, what he did. You know, that's just, just kind of weird. You know, the yeah, whole thing. Yeah, it's crazy. Like what? What could he possibly have like said? I mean, that that wasn't said by a million. Well, Boston Lloyd loses his channel all the time. I don't think Boston Lloyd has a channel. He's always getting banned from Instagram, and, and but I have a feeling people probably report him too. Yeah, but the, the, the amount of all the things that are out there, I know, on so many different weird subjects and topics and fake stuff and bogus you, stuff and you know what people get most people get uh, banned for nowadays political you can't say anything political did you know that well i won't say anything about trump then well we're not a political channel but i'm just saying in well, general when you get banned even that fat that yeah that but i'm saying faster you you can't say anything political anymore they they instantly ban you you know, and, and people don't want to lose their channels. Yeah. It's crazy. Really, it's it's insane when you think about it. I'm, you know, I, I look at these YouTube channels, you know, Chris, and I'm like saying to myself, I should just do a fish tank channel. It's so hard to get hits on, on like a bodybuilding channel. I mean, I mean, it's not like, like a lot. <laughs> this this kid I watch on YouTube, you know, I'm trying to pull up his uh, his videos. This guy, this kid, he's a kid. He lives in his mother's basement. He goes around the world, basically, just filming people's fish tanks. You're not going to believe in this. The, what, in their homes? It could be their homes. It could be, it could be yeah, anywhere. That's, you know. Fish are bigger than the Olympia, I guess. Yeah. yeah that's what I'm finding out. 
See if I can get a good picture of this kid. Hold on. Dave, you know what it is? It's like this. I used to have a bodybuilding camp. Right. I was the first one to ever do it. I preempted Sean Ray. You did it yourself? I did it with Laura. Okay. And I would have this camp all the time. And Joe gave me, Joe Weider gave me free ads in Muscle and Fitness and Flex. So it was free oh, money. Advertise. Okay. And, um, and I, and right off the bat, the stunning thing was that we got total number of bodybuilders to attend zero. <laughs> it, it was, was just all people. people. It was just regular people who, right. you know, the fish tank people. Yeah. It was regular people who were like, okay. I wanted to hang know, out with Chris and Laura. Or, you know what? I, I want to get in really good shape. I, I'm, I'm taking you way back, you know, way over 20 years ago. Yeah. But I want to get in great shape. Okay. I see this ad in the magazine. She's in great shape. He's in great shape. They must know something. So at least I'll go for the information. Right. Well, it's, it's like it's, a, it's a weird it's, it's a weird connection. No, it's a, I mean, it's a stretch. It's a but it's like the fish. Thing, right? It's the yeah, it's the guru course. People okay. go for the knowledge. So yeah. if I would have did it, if, it look if you, if I said Chris Cito and, and I gonna be in a gym doing a, a, a training camp, you don't think that we would we would have, sell it out? I don't know, but you know what? I can tell no, you that would. they would want to come hang out, even to, to learn how to train, number one, but also just to hang out with us. You know, to, had to I been really smart back then, instead of doing a bodybuilding camp, I probably would have just better been better. I would have been better off selling fish yeah. with an yeah. ad in Muscle and Fitness. It'd be like, where's the connection? No, Look at this people. guy, seven million views on this video. He looks like a fish. <laughs> seven million. <laughs> Seven million. He, he looks like. Um, He's got six hundred ten thousand subscribers, and he just recently. So this is not that. This is not like a new channel. It's not like an old channel. Look at these. He's they, got millions of views on these things. You should you should put one up as a trial balloon, Dave. Dave, you, you should you know. Chris, I I have a fish channel. I'll pull my channel that I haven't posted anything to since I moved four years ago. I had just started it. Oh, muscle fish. Okay. See, there you go. You you are ahead of your time, and this guy's cashing in. Muscle fish. Muscle fish. I'm gonna pull up my channel here. Hold on. The subscribers, Chris, go up every single day. I got almost twenty thousand subscribers. I haven't posted a single video in in four years on there. Okay. The reason is people love to look at fish tanks. Okay. If I it's got more. It's got more subscribers than my reptile channel, which I put up a video almost every day, like five days a week. Okay, because people love to look at this. And these are just looking at my old. They're all looking at my old stuff. My Snow White Arowana I had. They, 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 look at. They got tons of ads on this. You can't even watch the. They can't even watch the video. There's so many ads. That's my. That's my arowana that I had. It was almost three feet long. That was my monster. My monster fish tank, Chris. And why don't why don't you try to expand this this you don't have the time i don't have time i don't have a fish I tank well, I'm, I'm, I'm setting up a fish tank in the garage now so amanda and i decided we, one tank is is reasonable you know so oh god dave you're such a psycho right? well we agreed that we're not one is reasonable than. everyone listening for oh, now I get, you know, for now, crazy. For now. Crazy. you get obsessed Oh, I'm, she's saying I'm not telling the truth. I have one fish tank, though. I have a, I have turtle. I have a turtle tub in there, and I have a tortoise you know, tub too. But that's I don't count those because they're not fish. But but you're gonna get obsessed about it. Well, I would, but you know what? I, I have too much work already to do with the other with the snakes, and I enjoy that. But so I I don't really want a, a million fish tanks. But I like the whole. I like I love fish, and I've had like you know, I really. What maximize. is the, why do you like fish so much? What's I don't it? know. I just I like the whole idea of capturing you know nature in, in a tank. It's like just something cool. And there was always these fish, certain fish that I wanted to get as a kid that I couldn't because, you know, I couldn't, my parents would never buy me a humongous fish tank. Oh, yeah. They'd give you so, the guppies. So I, I couldn't do it. So, anyway, so that's, uh, <laughs> so I think, I think gonna, I'm going to switch to covering fish tanks from now on. Rather than go around the world and, and watch the no, Olympia you, you or and, wake and up Australia up. Grand Prix, I'll just, I'll just go around and, and, and video fish tanks and make a lot more money. And I could quit doing everything else. This kid probably makes, 30, 40 grand a month, I would think, off his uh, channel. Crazy. Yeah. YouTube is, look, you know, if my kid said to me, I want to be a YouTuber, I'd be like, I'd be 100% in support of it. You know, I'd be like, 
knock yourself out. If you're going to give 100% effort to it, you can work, be your own boss. You can work from home. You don't have to go anywhere. You might not be able to go anywhere and have to work at home. So yeah. you may have to be a YouTuber. Everyone's going to be an entertainer nowadays. I see these channels. That, <laughs> yeah, it's, just, it's true. These but... kids have these channels now that um, where they're they're doing like they're like my son watches this stuff. Like this kid Ethan and and Cole, they 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 run around killing werewolves and and, and other crazy I don't know aliens or whatever they're there after with these Nerf guns. Yeah, my son's obsessed with these Nerf guns now. Mm -hmm. Grandma, grandma bought him one that say it's it, the Nerf guns at grandma's house. He's not allowed to bring it home because I know I'll get hit in the eye with one of the projectiles that he shoots out of there. Because he's my son is just not doesn't like the guns. He likes to assassinate you. You know, point blank range. You know. Well, maybe he needs maybe he needs like a little kitty's kids YouTube <laughs> station for now. <laughs> if you if your son ever came over, forget about it. There would oh be, God, would to, be like to go for hours. Yeah, yeah, they'd ruin your house. Oh, I, I, of course. Your seven-year-old would destroy chasing him. They just destroy it. You would love it that your son is older, like that he can he has some competition because he's you know he's tough. He's, oh, he's, yeah. He yeah. likes to be rough. And so sometimes, you know, with the younger kids, you have to like Logan, take it easy. You know, with yeah. your son, he can get kid loves. Not yeah, your your son would push him around probably, you know. But yeah, you could teach him a good lesson. <laughs> and then spend like nine hours in the pool. There you go. That's right. They'd be drowning each other in the pool, it would be great. Except we can't even see each other because of the stupid COVID. Yeah. All the, all, all the, the whole world has changed. It's all changing. You know, I got to thank also, I don't have the, the thing with me. Maybe, do you have that, any of those RX hustle masks in this house? Or are they at the office? Um, Heinz Sr., you know Heinz. Heinz sent yeah. me these, um, he's always into some new business. He sent me these RX muscle masks. They're, they're the best ones I've ever seen. Heart, yeah. Heart, oh, you're, where's it? Is it on Facebook? Didn't he and George Fair have a, a supplement company together? Oh, My memory's right. going really good tonight, Dave. Huh? Did they? Him and George Farah had a supplement company together. He did. They sold it, from what he told me. I don't see it on your Instagram. Was it on your mom's? No, it's on your story. I don't see it. Okay. Her mom, yeah, her mom was wearing the mask. It looked great. I said, "You look like a real badass with this What's mask." Got a little logo on the side. Here's the problem with the mask. See, I have a big head, so the standard mask with those little things that go behind your ears, it it yeah. pulls so tight that my ears get pulled this way and the mask fall off. Heinz's mask has these little like drawstrings. You can kind of adjust how much slack you got there, so it doesn't pull so tight, and you can I can wear it. Mm -hmm. What I've been wearing recently is I wear just these this thing around my head. Like but does it, does it have an RX Muscle logo on it? No, that doesn't. That's why I like the Heinz thing. Heinz did a great job with these masks. I'm, I'm, she's going to get one so she can show it to you. Hold on. Where's my helmet? Thing? I'll show you what I'm wearing. This is what I'm wearing around. Not that anyone cares, but all right. Hold on. I love that I can pull pictures up. This is That's what I'm wearing now. I look like I'm, I'm from the the, the you look like Lee priest there, <laughs> right? The eyes or something. I don't know. Yeah. Oh, you got it. Oh, okay, good. I was in the car. Okay, hold on. Where are you in there? Walmart? Uh, somewhere. You know, no, I'm in like Sam's. All right, here's here's one. This is not even the best one though, man. Did you see oh, the one? Walmart, Walmart family, same thing. See, it's got the. Um, I see it. Those little, little things on here. on here, so you can kind of adjust the ears. See, he, a man oh. has small has a small head, so this is only adjusted. If I wore it, it would be almost to the end here because I need more slack. Is it patented? I don't know if it's patented, but it should be. So I got this, and then there's another one. If I can only find the one that her mom's wearing, she sent me a she texted me a picture. I don't think she posted it anywhere, but it's actually like half of it's the RX symbol, and half of it's like you know the repeater that I have behind me usually when I do my interviews. Yeah, we do our debate and stuff like that. Half of it's that, and it's really cool looking. He did a great. I'm going to see. Maybe he can make. Maybe he can make them. I'll make some available for sale. Well, maybe for the judges for the pro show, they can <laughs> like IPD on them. Oh no, yeah, but you know, or or you know what they should do? They, the judges should wear the ones. They should get sponsors and say, look, you know, if if RX Muscle sponsors the show, all the judges will wear the RX Muscle masks. You know, yeah. <laughs> that'll be the new thing, right? 
soon they'll have to soon we'll have to have competitors on stage. They'll have they'll have their uh, their company's yeah. logo on there. Oh look, it's uh, it's uh, Phil Heath. He's wearing the uh, gifted nutrition uh, logo yeah. on on his mask. <laughs> Big Ram, he's got uh, Dragon Farm or whatever yeah. he's doing. So we think we'll see. Is Big Ramy doing the New York Pro? Where's, what's he going to qualify for the Olympia doing? I hear he's in Egypt. Oh, he is in Egypt. Yeah, but I hear it's tough to once you're in Egypt. It's I I have heard it's tough to get out. Yeah, he could always go back to Kuwait. I guess he could probably go from Egypt to Kuwait and then Kuwait to the U.S. Yeah. But what, I mean, what, how many shows are left? What do we have? Chicago and New York? New York, Chicago, California. If California Three. goes up. Yeah. What, Romania? But I don't even know if Romania is a qualifier. I think there's a show in Spain, but. Yeah. I don't know. Is that the big man or something like that? No, I think it's. Um, no, it's not the big man. But it's in Spain. Two twelve and open. I mean, because he's got he's got to qualify. Obviously, they didn't they didn't give him a, a free pass last time. So maybe he thinks he's going to get the you know the... an invite. I don't know. I don't know if well, they didn't, like if they didn't said, do a last year. Why would they give it to him this year? Um, because they want him in the show. I don't know. Well, they, they I would have thought they wanted him in the show last year too. They didn't give him the invite. Right. That's right. So I don't know. I, I would think I, I bet we see him in Chicago if he can get here. Or what's what's the European show you said that they have? Something in Spain. That, that I thought they the oh the Alicante one is that the one? Yeah. In Alicante, Spain or something like that. Yeah. Let me look and see if I can find it on the schedule. There's a Sharu Classic coming up. Is that happening? Oh, that's no, that already happened. Yeah. Look yeah. at it all. Stuff. Hold on. Dave, we're looking at 2018 schedule. Yeah, yeah, I'm looking at the wrong schedule here. All right, so we got the New York Pro is the 5th of September. California is the 12th. In California, they just announced they're moving it to Tampa, but go ahead. <laughs> uh, then they got the – oh, this is, this is a master show, so that doesn't count. And the Spain one is called the European Pro Men's Bodybuilding Show. Mm -hmm. Oh, uh, John Enrico is running that. Yes, that's right. With Emilio Martinez. That's on October 11th. And then the week after that is the Chicago. That's they, 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 we got a lot of pro shows. We oh, got the God. Legion Sports Fest. Yeah. Oh, that's a, is that Matt? No, that's Pro Men's Bodybuilding. Yeah, yeah that's, that's awesome. Chris Minnis. A good friend. Rich Seelman's holding the – oh, that's a Masters. Oh, it says Masters. Alan oh, Dershowitz is sponsoring a show. Is it? <laughs> There's a – supposedly on, on November, 11, uh, November 7th I, – I can't imagine this one happening. United Kingdom Pro Men's Bodybuilding? Is that happening? Yeah, I heard that one's supposed to happen. Oh, that, that's good. But, that's good for the guys in, in England. Then there's Bucharest, Romania. On the yeah. November fourteenth. Yeah, I don't know if that's a qualifier. I think it is for. It says it's on the pro uh, open. It says men's uh, pro bodybuilding. If viewers want to know why I just yawned, it's because it's like two thirty in the morning. Too bad. <laughs> they come. The viewers come first, Chris. That's what it's all about. We have to entertain them. Look, they're they're doing their cardio and they're they're listening to us yeah. talk on this. I'm gonna, I'm gonna do a fish tank, uh, fish tank steroid site, yeah. site YouTuber. So guys, if you subscribe to my uh, my my channel fish that I don't put any, my fish tank channel that I don't put any more videos on, because um, I need I need the I need the views. I'll show you my reptile channel. Don't and don't say my like, goldfish matter because then you'll be banned, Dave. That's right. So nothing political. <laughs> the great Martin Luther King quote someone put on. Did you see that? On um, where? I'm trying to think where it was now. So I think actually Rory Liedelmeyer had it on. I think I saw it on his page. Hold on. Here's my um here's my snake channel. For those of you like don't like when I talk about snakes too bad. 
Okay. Muscle Serpents University. I see mu I put muscle in everything. So, that, you know, to keep it, I have to keep connected. There's got to be a, a common theme. Yeah. So subscribe to that, guys. Just give me a, give me the subscribe if you don't watch my videos. I know yeah. you, we have a lot of people out here watch it. Just go there. Muscle Fish, Muscle Serpents University. Hit subscribe. If you don't subscribe to the Arx Muscle Channel, you should better subscribe to that, too, because that's you don't want to miss any of our great shows. Okay, there's my plug. Now, what? Oh, I was going to show you the. Oh, let me see what that. Yeah, that Rory Liedemeyer thing is. I think that was the quote. I'm going to get political. And they're going to they're going to ban us. <laughs> Rory Liedemeyer has got a good page on uh, on. And I got to say, the guy. I don't know how he old he is. He's got to be what sixty. I think it's in his sixties. Yeah, looks great. He looks really good. His age. Well, I told you, one of Serge Dubray's all-time favorite bodybuilders. Really? Yeah, I think. It, Serge thought he could be Mr. Olympia, hands down. I, I agree. What a physique this guy Hands has. down. Hmm. He's got to say, you could tell he's just a creative guy. He used to say, call him Wowie. Wowie. W O W Y. Wowie. 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 Come back, check back with me, Wowie. <laughs> <laughs> Hold on, I'll show you the picture of what he looks like. I think this is what he looks like now. He still looks great, right? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, where are we? Where are you? Where are you? How, come, what's his, how come he never got a pro card? Uh, he lost to Bob Paris at the Nationals. Speaking of Bob Paris, he's he's, he's, and, he's, he's lost his mind, too. But. And uh, and I don't know. He just he kind of like fell off the face of the earth, Rory. I think he did like, I think he won like the AU America or something, but it wasn't the you know didn't have the prestige anymore. And uh, I mean, you you talked about people not fulfilling their potential. Rory Liedemeyer, ask anyone. Look at this, Chris. Yeah. Look at it. I think that's then and now or something like that. <laughs> it's, it still looks pretty good. Yeah. He may have a better hairline than than uh, Jay. Oh my God, right? Tell me about it. The guy hasn't lost a hair. He looks like a, a bigger version on the left. That that photo by the left on the left was taken by Jason Mathis, by the way. What a great shot that is, right? Yeah, that um that's the classic Lord He looks uh, like Charles Claremont there. He does, you're right, with the long hair. Look at that. You know what? Rory. Rory looks like a rock star there, man. I mean, talk about – you know who else loved him? I can't imagine Ed didn't love him. Ed, no, go higher than Ed. Bob? No, higher. Oh, uh, Weeder? Oh, yeah, Bob, I think, prepped it, but he knows Bob well. Oh, uh, he did? Oh, wow. yeah, Joe. Joe. Joe loved him, but he – you know, Joe was like this weird – not done. Joe was weird. Joe loved him, but like wanted him to compete, like win the nationals, get your pro card, right. and I'll make you a superstar. You can't just like have the model good looks. That picture on the left, dude, is like right. It's wacky. It's got the perfect hair, perfect cheeks. Look at this. 27 versus 61. 27, man. He was 27. <laughs> That's crazy. Yeah, he was young when he got started. He's not that old now. Yeah, I think he, you know what? Because twenty, that, see the picture on the left. That was take. Those are Jason Mathis pictures. Yeah, and that's when he was making kind of, I think, a comeback for like the. Oh, he was okay. I'll tell you what year. Uh, I'm guessing he's making a comeback at twenty seven. <laughs> Dave, uh, I'm I'm guessing he was twenty two when he was second to Bob Paris. Wow, oh, I think wow. Bob was twenty one or twenty two. Well, that's when guys are younger though, too. They, they um, they seem to be even Sean Ray. They all that whole crowd was very young when they turned pro. Yeah. But what's going on, with Bob? Bob Paris has like been really uh, down on bodybuilding. I, well, he was kind of down. People on send me these links of it was like really like depressing send me one. stuff. Send me one. He said. Send me, one. send me one. Send me one. He it was something like uh, I don't know. He was saying like he was blacklisted. He was insinuating by Joe Weider. Oh, he came out as being gay when when it was yeah. like, you know, 
Do you think that that's, that was the truth? You think they they just once he wrote that book and came out that they discriminated against him, or was it just maybe he just perceived it as that? I think there's a truth. There's truth in both. You know what he perceived and what was. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's hard. You know what? It's it. No, because you're thinking today. Yeah, that's that's what about five years ago. Right. Maybe Joe said you're not marketable if, if you do that. You know, I can't use you if you if, if, uh, if you. Uh, well, of, uh, I'm sure Bob. Yeah. I'm sure Bob had the conversation with Joe before he did it. Don't you think? I guaranteed. Guaranteed. Joe probably told him not to, and he probably I'm did sure. it. Anyway. Yeah, I'm sure. I said, you know, stay in the closet, Bob. He probably said, wait till you're done competing. Yeah. yeah. Because of marketability, maybe because you know back then you know marketability was everything. I mean, Every, was, you just took the words right out of my mouth. Everything nowadays, okay. it's, it's like almost like you're better if you're gay. Yeah. I think you do better. <laughs> it's like more acceptable. I don't want to get your YouTube channel canceled. You sound like Trump. What Trump said: "It's easier when you're black." No, <laughs> you know what Trump said. Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, I, I think that um, yeah, you you got to think. The, where the environment was 25 years ago. So people would come up to Bob and like, like, what's that saying? The elephant in the room? Yeah. The elephant in the room that it was that he was gay. So there's clearly going to be some judges back then, 28 years ago. Yeah. Who be like, I'm not having this guy in the top five. Right. But then there were probably some judges that were like, ooh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Get those names from Nick or Jilly. Yeah. <laughs> That's why Nick's channel was shut down. He had the names. Oh, <laughs> oh man. Anyway, what a... I'd love to because I, you know, I haven't talked about Paris. The, yeah. I tell you, last time I talked to Bob Paris, yeah. well, no, the second to last time, uh, but 2001 Olympia came up after prejudging yeah. and said, I mean, how's that? Jay loved Bob Paris. I mean, physique wise, yeah. Physique wise, had that uh, that book flawless. And Bob came up to me after pre judging and it was like, like out of nowhere. And he's like, oh, Jay's got this. I'm like, what are you doing here at the show? Oh, he just, he wasn't. Yeah, he... I come in to see the Olympia. I wanted to see what was going on. Wow. I bet you if you reached out to him and said, look, I'll interview, like, get me out of the equation. Maybe you could interview Bob. I'll set the whole thing up and you, you could do the interview with Bob on this anyway. and I'll just engineer it. Maybe he'll do it because he yeah. likes you. A fascinating story, dude. He, he's his, his story is uh, he ran away from home. Oh really? I didn't even know. Yeah, he ran away from home. He grew up, I think in Iowa or Idaho or something. Oh wow. I think, I think, I can't remember, but he moved, he was like a teen runaway. Oh wow! And he wanted, you know, he went out to L.A. to be a bodybuilder, and right. it all worked out for him. Was he a runaway because was he because was he discriminated so. against? Because yeah, I think so. I think I think he had like a stepfather. I can't remember the story. Oh, we you got to get him on. We got to get this interview. I, I have his book somewhere. He sent me the book. He that, the book Gorilla Suit. And he's like, well, put you on the cover. Get him, Ron. Get him. Yeah. <laughs> I think Chris froze, or maybe I froze. No, I you froze. You froze. Hmm. Oh, they froze. They're going to cancel your station, Dave. Oh, I think we were both having our own conversation. We both froze. And I said, I said, Black Middle Day, like, hey, Ron, get him on the show. We'll, we'll put him on the cover. Give him a cover. <laughs> yeah, you got to reach out to him. I think he'll respond to you because you guys had a, a, you know, you coached him and had a good relationship with him. So you never know. Yeah, up to send me his email, send me his contact. Yeah, I will. All right. Well, guys, uh, we got to wrap this up. Chris has got to go to his fall asleep. And um, we gave you an hour. I try to give him an hour every yeah, week. We, we, we have to give them two hours. No, we gave him an hour. It's an hour. That's it? Yeah. But when you don't have anything to talk about, it seems like it goes longer. Yeah. When we're breaking down a show and everything like that, you know, it's it's uh, it goes faster, you know, because we can actually we actually have something to talk about. Well, we got three weeks. We'll find. And yeah, we're just chit chit chatting. Yeah, but, but you know what? From reading that schedule, though, Chris, it seems like as we get into the fall, we're going to have a lot of shows coming up, and I think that's everyone kind of pushed their shows. Then, hopefully, they hopefully they don't have to all be outside. <laughs> that might be the new. That might be the new way they do it now. Except, 
uh, I guess you can do that in California pretty easily, but you don't want it in Chicago in, in, in November, have to hold the show outside. You're free to <laughs> petunias off there. Bell may have to get the, you know, get the, get all his connections, the, the lights and bonfires over there. To keep it really warm. <laughs> <laughs> all right, guys, you know what to do until next week. Remember with heavy muscle radio, the truth hurts in the pregame show. It does. Surely does. We'll see you next week.